All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Shannon Wolfolk, and I am a junior, rising junior, in electrical engineering at Virginia Tech. And hello, everyone. Welcome in. Um, my name is Tyler Pugh, and I'm a rising senior in industrial and systems engineering in Spanish. Um, I'm also in the Honors College, so if you have any questions on any of those things, feel free to leave them in the Q&A bar. As you'll see as you're entering, there's a Q&A section, so if you have any questions during our presentation, feel free to leave them there, and then we'll make sure to respond to them after the presentation. Yes, and welcome to a Virginia Tech info session. All right, so um, what does it take generally to be an engineer? Well, first thing thing is creativity. Creativity. You have to um, be able to come up with different solutions and maybe something's never been done before. So you have to have that little creative spark in, in your personality. Um, teamwork. A lot of engineering problems are solved on teams. So typically it's, it's a more um, team focused industry and path of study as opposed to maybe coming up with a solution on your own. You're always going to be working with other people. Um, study habits. Engineering is a pretty rigorous course at Virginia Tech, so you have to have good study habits. You have to know what works best for you, and, and maybe if you don't have everything figured out now, you have to be able to figure that out and make sure that you know how to get yourself on the road to success. Um, engineering is the application of math and science, so you do need to have an interest in that or else it's not going to be very fun for you. Um, some engineering disciplines are more focused on math or science, and some of them have an equal balance of both, but just make sure you have a general interest in those, in those subjects. And then um, most of our Virginia Tech engineering students come in with a challenging background. So um, transfer credits in AP or IB, um, honors classes, dual enrollment, anything like that, any advanced program at your high school, and then also extracurricular activities. So things that may make you a more well-rounded student, or maybe you were in robotics in high school and you kind of got an understanding of what you want to study and apply STEM to in college. So now we're just going to look at the average reported GPA and SAT for the freshman engineering class of 2019. So the average reported GPA was a 4.2 on a 5.0 scale. Uh, for the SAT, the average math was a 707 and reading was a 655. Now, Virginia Tech does accept the ACT and the SAT, yet uh, Virginia Tech Engineering only reports the average SAT score, but they accept both. So if you're taking one or the other, that's all right. Um, around 20.7% of the incoming class was female, and around 29.4% are underrepresented minority students. All right, so um, this is just general information on the general engineering freshman class. So uh, if you scan that barcode, it'll take you to the general engineering VT website um, where you can find more information on common entry points and classes and things like that. Highly recommend you check out that website. Um, you can visit that website, the www.trainguide.com dot registrar dot dot edu to see what high school classes will transfer into Virginia Tech with the corresponding uh, grade, I guess, or ranking that you would get on the end of the year exam for that class. Um, one thing that Virginia Tech does for all students is what's called pathways. So it's kind of like your general education, like engineering students are still required to take um, arts and humanities classes. Um, more than just their STEM classes. Maybe you take a history class or a language or a social science, something like that. Uh, so that's kind of like where a lot of people may transfer credits in and knock those pathways out of the way before their freshman year. And then uh, all freshmen in engineering enter into a general engineering program. So you don't declare a specific engineering discipline right away. They'll enter in with all the other freshmen. At the end of your freshman year, you have the option to decide what, made, what engineering major you'd like to pursue. So as long as you have a 3.0 GPA at the end of your freshman year, spring semester, you're guaranteed that a spot in whichever major you choose, with the exception of biomedical engineering, which we'll get into later. 
So now we're going to talk about a little bit what you can expect as a freshman coming in. So all freshmen are required to take a gen, uh, general engineering or foundations of engineering course. Uh, it's a two part, a two semester long class that you'll take um, that will introduce you to other types of engineering um, and will add you to a project um, that at the end of the year you'll present on. So the first semester is really centered around getting you aware with CAD software, coding, sketching, as well as team building exercises and understanding the engineering majors and disciplines. Uh, personally, I came in thinking I was going to be a computer science major, um, and through the Foundations of Engineering course, I learned more about the major that I'm currently in now, Industrial and Systems Engineering, and it completely changed my perspective. So, like you can see, it helps with design and teamwork, disciplines, algorithms, graphing, so on and so forth. Your second semester is going to be a little different. You're going to be assigned a project, and that project is going to be a semester-long project that involves everything you learned in the first semester, including coding, sketching, design, and then at the very end, you'll present on it. So, for example, my year, we were in charge of creating a wind turbine that you had to design build and then code to test for how much it would power um, and then implement it into a community. Um, so all of those things were a part of the semester and it was a great way to apply what you learned in the first semester and get your feet running for any engineering that you end up going into. Because as we'll talk about, there are a lot of group um, projects and a lot of labs where you require to work with other people. So foundations is a great foundation. <laughs> All right, so these are some statistics for um, how many students are in each discipline as well as engineering education, which is that general engineering curriculum that all freshmen will enter in. So that's that top line right there. And then all of the other majors listed underneath are the dis different engineering disciplines. If you divide those numbers by three, that's how many students are in each grade level in that discipline. Okay, electrical engineering, that is my major, that's what I'm studying. Um, there are a lot of focuses within electrical engineering, but essentially it's working with circuits and hardware and designing like the electrical components of machines. Um, there's a lot of applications, you could go into energy, um, space systems, communications. Um, so there's, there's a lot you can do with it. Um, it's very hardware based, lab based, um, like you'll find in most engineering disciplines, it's teamwork heavy. Um, you, what will happen when, if you decide to choose electrical engineering is you'll declare a primary focus. Uh, so you can even do general electrical engineering, but it really allows a lot of leeway in what you want to do. Um, and like I said it is more hands-on um, so you will have labs in this discipline. So now we're going to talk about computer science. My, that was my hopeful major freshman year. Um, so computer science is all about designing and developing software from operating systems. So a little bit like what Shannon was talking about with electrical engineering being very hardware based, computer science is very software based. It's going to be a lot more on your computer, virtual reality, that kind of stuff. So possible areas of study include human and computer interaction, um, knowledge, information, and data. As you can see, the list goes on and on. Uh, there's a possible five-year track for your bachelor's and master's degrees. So there are some students that come in and don't want to have to apply to different grad schools. And they know that if they go into the computer science realm, they'll automatically graduate with a bachelor's and a master's if they want. Um, and job types include software design and development, mobile applications. And you'll see computer science is actually becoming a lot more popular and has a lot more applications um, within really large tech companies. So we see a lot of computer science graduates ending up working in a Microsoft or Facebook or these like really large companies. If you look at your top left, there's a video actually. Um, it is called The Cube and it's a virtual reality room um, that Computer science, makes, computer science majors, excuse me, are able to test out their software. So right now they're testing um, a program that they've write, written about um, crossing the street and pedestrian and testing automotive 
uh, capabilities and that guy just got hit by a car so they had to re they had to rework it but um, it's a great space specifically for computer scientists to test out their uh, inventions and something really unique to Virginia Tech all right computer engineering is kind of like the mesh between computer science and electrical engineering it's people in electrical engineering are working with how the software communicates with the hardware. Um, so it's kind of like that crossroads. Um, something that's really cool about computer and electrical is that they're all housed in the same department. So the way I said earlier about how you declare primary focus in electrical engineering, and if you decide to major in computer engineering, you also declare primary focus, but you can have a secondary focus in either computer again or electrical engineering. So there's a lot of crossover between the two, but computer engineering tends to deal more with software than EE would electrical engineering. Um, so some specifications that you would be able to work on would be networking, um, cybersecurity, communications, um, nanosystems, things like that. But basically any, any time that you're working on a computer, and you're not actually doing the, all the coding, like you're also interacting with hardware, that would be computer engineering. And so like an example would be um, like a smart fabric where it's got like a, a programming aspect to it where it can communicate with the user, um, but also has that hardware component to it. All right, so now we're going to talk about biological systems engineering. So biological systems engineering uh, combines biology, chemistry, and engineering to solve problems associated with environmental protection, the conservation of natural resources, renewable resources, stuff like that. So in all ideas, this is kind of a combination between the College of Natural Resources and the Environment and the College of Engineering. Uh, you'll see that there are two main tracks within the biological systems engineering department. There's the biomed track, which is it's mostly involving composite materials, biomaterials, stuff like that, and the green track, which is more like sustainability. Now, you'll see that the biological systems engineering actually sets you up really well to go into some sort of pre-med, pre-vet, pre-dental area. So you'll see a lot of people that are interested in pre-med, um, a lot of my friends specifically, um, that are interested in pre-med, but still want to get that engineering background. Um, this was a perfect major for them. Um, as you can see, the job types are a wide range of them from biopharmaceuticals, biotechnology, stuff like that. Um, and if you're not interested in getting a major, but instead are looking maybe to get maybe a minor, there is a biomed minor that's offered. Um, it's more related to the internal forces of the body, and it does require that you be a part of the College of Engineering to begin with. So if that's something that interests you, but you don't want to commit completely to biological systems, you can get a biomed minor um, that would satisfy what you were passionate about. Also, Tyler, there was a question that came up in the Q&A about if there's an area of specialization in data science, AI, or machine learning in the CS major. And so I'll let you handle CS in a second, but I just want to make a quick note that um, in computer engineering, there also focuses like if you wanted to do cybersecurity or communications or anything like that, that you would be able to also take classes in data science and AI and like even for me, I'm an EE and I plan on taking AI classes. So there's definitely a little bit of leeway into that as well. Yeah, and, and to answer that question specifically for CS majors, I would just kind of echo what you said, Shannon, is that there are definitely classes um, that you can take that, so how it works with engineering is that um, you have a certain amount of leeway with what classes you take within that major and there are, classes that involve data science, AI, and machine learning that you can decide to take as part of your CS major. But as far as I know, you cannot like necessarily specialize in those um, courses, th those areas, but you can take classes to prepare yourself for a career in those fields, if that makes sense. All right, chemical engineering. Um, if, if you think about chemical engineering, it's basically studying the chemical makeup of maybe a medicine or drug or um, a ceramic or something like that, and then figuring out how to mass produce it on a large scale. So the researchers are the people who are, are making that product, and then a chemical engineer takes it 
modifies it to make the process, the design process more efficient so that it can be sold um, efficiently on a large scale. Um, they do have a lot of labs as well, um, but it's like I said, large scale. So you're dealing with like cost efficiency, um, safety, things like that. Um, and they do work in fuels and energy, uh, chemical production, maybe like a like a paper company or something, environmental quality and sustainability, um, food, health, pharmaceuticals, things like that. Um, and like I said, you could be working in like paper or pharmaceuticals or ceramics, things like that. So now we're gonna talk about material science and engineering. So material science and engineering is really to do with coming up with new and improved materials uh, for the society that we live in today. Um, so they're, they're in charge of studying the properties and structures of the material that goes into everyday objects and figuring out the most efficient way to create them um, and also to mass produce them. So it's very hands-on. There are a lot of labs that are included with this major. Um, students have a, definitely a lot of research opportunities to design and cast materials that they would see in everyday um, life, but also it would be very applicable to the career that you would go into um, because a lot of people that end up with material science engineering end up going into manufacturing jobs and materials. One interesting thing is if you look on the bottom right, uh, that is Cedric Hume. He is the running back and he had a broken arm in 2007, I believe. And so material science and engineering designed a cast specifically for him. It was soft enough so that the NCAA didn't flag it as a weapon, but hard enough and strong enough so that it would protect his arm um, from further injury. And we played and we won the ACC championship. So uh, material science engineering likes to say that they won it for us, but debatable. However, material science did have a lot to do with the success of our running back. So that's a very interesting thing about their major. All right, mining and minerals engineering. Um, fun fact, Virginia Tech is one of the 12 universities that are accredited in this discipline. Um, but we like to say, if you can't grow it and can't make it in a lab, then you have to mine it. And that's what mining and minerals engineers are responsible for. They look at maybe like the safety of people going into mines or um, they're responsible for like, if you think of how to make a product, you have to get that metal or materials from somewhere. So they have to go find where to get it, um, safely like dig it up or procure it and then manipulate that and make it ready for production. So they're responsible with all of that. They do a lot with safety. Um, <laughs> they blow things up a lot. So if you're into explosives, that might be um, the discipline for you. And also something that's uh, interesting is that they have 100% job placement. Um, so if you decide to graduate in this discipline, you're guaranteed a job because the field is so, they need mining and minerals engineering. Also, fun fact, um, Tesla predicts that there's going to be a shortage of these types of engineers, mining and minerals engineering, and it's going to um, negatively impact like battery production and things like that because, I mean, you need metals to create batteries. So um, they're definitely very important um, and not given a lot of attention to, but definitely something to think about. All right, so civil engineering. So civil engineering, uh, civil engineers conceive, design, build, uh, supervise, operate, construct, and maintain infrastructure. Like we're talking bridges, roads, airports, buildings, um, anything like that, civil engineers are on it. Um, so as you can see, areas of emphasis include construction, environmental, materials, land development, transportation, the list goes on and on. Um, and like similar to computer science and the question that we were asked, um, the classes that you take can coincide with the uh, major track that you decide to go on. Um, it was, it's also very interesting because a professor that teaches 
in civil engineering was actually a spearhead for the Flint, Michigan water crisis. So he took students from the civil engineering department to go do research with him in that field in Flint, Michigan itself. So that was a really unique experience. Um, he teaches a class, uh, an intro to civil engineering class currently. Um, so someone as famous and as world renowned as um, him that was doing research in Flint, Michigan, um, is now teaching in the civil engineering department and still taking on researchers. So that's a very unique uh, idea and perspective on the civil engineering degree. Um, also, if you look in the bottom right, you'll see the Google car. Um, you'll see that a lot of times Google will bring out their cars and machines to test on our roads and bridges. Um, so that's something that civil engineers get a, a really awesome hand in. Um, designing the bridges and the roads that will be used to test for Google Cars. So those are all very unique things within civil engineering. And yeah. All right, construction engineering and management is kind of similar to civil, but it also ties in more of the business aspect of engineering as well. So they're dealing more with like project management. They're gonna be the people who are on site building the designs, um, directing other people within different teams. So kind of like that leadership role. Um, they're more in the field. They do like surveying, things like that. Um, they also have 100% job placement as well. So there's definitely a need for them. Um, and they really tie in like that coordination, teamwork, business aspect that a lot of engineers may lack. So um, definitely it's like, if you want to have more of that leadership role and you're also inter interested in infrastructure, definitely consider construction engineering and management. They focus on all four sections of industry, so the residential side, commercial side, industrial, and heavy. All right, so now we're gonna go to aerospace and ocean engineering. So aerospace and ocean engineering um, combines two degrees in one department. So you can major in aerospace or ocean engineering. Uh, aerospace is definitely the more popular of the two, but it is important to note that it is, it is very possible and fairly common to double major in aerospace and ocean because the classes have so much overlap. Uh, because there's so much overlap, uh, things that you'll focus on are include Aerodynamics and hydrodynamics, it's very similar, it's just different levels of density. Um, structures, propulsions, flight mechanics, and obviously these are transferable to the air and the sea, so that's why it's so easy to double major within the two of them. Now, if you look at the bottom left of the screen, there is a wind tunnel video. Now, NASA designed a wind tunnel um, that was used to test hurricane um, efficiency and, and how much a human could withstand. And when they were done with it, as you can see, date was around 2009, they donated to Virginia Tech to make a new one. Uh, they did not end up uh, creating a new one. And so they asked for ours back and we said, no, you're not gonna have it back. So now we have, uh, probably the best wind tunnel um, around. So Aerospace loves to talk about that. Um, as you can see from the video, he gets up to around category five, almost like barely um, before stopping. But that's something that Aerospace and Ocean Engineers had a hand in researching and developing. So that was an interesting um, part of Aerospace. Mechanical engineering is kind of like the jack of all trades for engineering. They focus on a very wide range of things. Um, they focus on motion, energy, heat, forces, fluids, anything like that. Um, it's a very broader range. So um, if you're really not sure what kind of engineering or where you see yourself 10 years down the line, a lot of people like to go into mechanical because it gives you a lot of freedom in what you can end up doing. Like they can basically do anything if they want. Um, and then also within mechanical engineering, there is like a, I guess, I guess like a subcategory, you could call it a focus um, in mechatronics, which kind of combines that mechanical engineering and electrical engineering side of things. Um, they are very prominent in like autom automotives and cars, things like that. Um, but machines, they're basically working on machines and they can do anything, so. It's a good, good one to consider. 
So biomedical engineering is actually the newest engineering that has been created at Virginia Tech. It was presented in the fall of 2018 to undergraduate engineering students. It is basically biological systems engineering, but more like a humanistic component to it. It also focuses more on the internal workings of the body. Um, as, you, as we mentioned before, biomedical engineering is the only engineering major that even if you have above a 3.0, you're still not guaranteed admission. It does have a interview process. So if you're interested in biomedical, you will go through an interview uh, phase. And then if you're accepted, you can then start taking classes. It's generally new. So we don't see that many students as of right now in the class, but it is growing every year. Um, some areas of interest, as you can read, um, include biomechanics, cardiovascular engineering, neuroengineering. So like I said, definitely very internal workings of the body. And it's also a really good engineering major to go into if you're interested in pre-med um, or pre-vet or pre-dental, um, because it combines biology, chemistry, physics, and engineering into one um, major within the engineering department. So if that's something that interests you, this is definitely a good area for you. And then finally, um, industrial and systems engineering. So industrial and systems engineering is what I'm currently majoring in. And it is what it is the human engineering of the engineering departments. It is focused mostly on making systems more efficient and compatible with the user. Um, so as you can see, the areas of emphasis include human factors, manufacturing systems, management systems, and operations research. So you're going to take classes in each of those uh, different areas. And personally, one of my favorites was human factors. And I like to talk about this a lot because it's a really interesting class that combines the design and aesthetics of a product with the psychology of the product, uh, with the engineering of the product. So to, for example, a door handle, um, you wouldn't really think about it, but how you grab the door handle has something to do with how you interact with that product every day um, and how to make that more efficient, how to make it more adaptable to everyone, regardless of capability. Um, and so that's something that industrial and systems engineering takes into consideration. It's also fairly easy to uh, minor in business with industrial and systems engineering. I would consider it a combination of mechanical and a business degree. Um, and you'll see a lot of people go into a wide range of fields within the ISC department. So I've had friends that have gone to um, Disney or Microsoft on the very technical end of industrial engineering. But I've also had people go to Wells Fargo and Deloitte on the very business human um, engineering portion of it. So uh, it, there's a wide range of availability within ISC and um, I personally love the department, but I'm a little biased, so. All right, if, there's, if you wanna learn more information about each engineering discipline, um, feel free to search around on Virginia Tech's website if you click that link, um, or if you just wanna Google Virginia Tech engineering, um, you can find it through there and it'll give you um, like a brief description. I know when I was deciding what engineering to go into, I checked out the website and like there's a place to see what skills are very heavy in that discipline as well. So if you're not sure, it might give you a little bit of a foundation in maybe which ones you should consider. So there are definitely much more opportunities available outside of just the major that you decide on. So there are engineering minors. So the minors can involve anything from computer science to naval engineering. Obviously, you can try to pick up whatever minor interests you, but there are going to be certain majors that are adapted to those certain minors. So if you're majoring in, let's say, civil engineering, green engineering is a very easy minor to pick up because there's a lot of overlap. But if any of these engineering minors interest you, um, you can talk to your advisor about picking them up and they will help you navigate signing up for classes that correspond with that minor. Now, engineering minors is one thing. You can also double major um, within the College of Engineering. It's fairly uncommon. Ocean and aerospace are the two most popular. Um, but if you want to double major outside of engineering, um, as like I'm doing with Spanish, what you can do is talk to the advisor from the department that you're interested in. Uh, they will help you sign up for classes just as your engineering advisor would, and you can add that double major. Um, one recommendation that we make though is that um, you have like an interest 
at going into it and you know what you want to do because sometimes the engineering degrees um, have a lot of classes that you're required to take. Um, so it's really hard to sometimes fit those classes in. So the earlier you know you want a double major or minor, the easier it'll be for you. Uh, we also have study abroad opportunities. So specifically, there is the RSAP or the Rising Sophomore Abroad Program. This is obviously for sophomores, rising sophomores, and it'll be between your freshman and sophomore year, your summer. And it will take you to either a few countries in South America or in Europe to experience what engineering is like in other countries outside of the United States. Um, some of the people that I've known that have gone on this trip have had a much more globally aware perspective coming back and understand what kind of um, perspective they should have coming into engineering in the United States. Um, I just kind of want to touch on that because I actually did that RSAP program. <laughs> and so I went to Spain and Morocco uh, the summer before my sophomore year. Uh, it's a two week program. And like Tyler said, it really did give me a great perspective on engineering on a global scale and like maybe how people in different in how engineering companies in different countries um, have to cater maybe towards a market that's very centered in the United States or vice versa. Um, so I definitely it, it's a really great opportunity. Um, it doesn't set you back at all or maybe prolong your graduation, which I know for me, I was worried about that. Um, but it really does give you a chance to diversify your perspectives and really gain an understanding of like, not just where you would fit in on a, on a national scale, but on a global scale as well. Thank you. Yeah, I, I had no idea that you went on that. So that's perfect. Um, if you're interested in study abroad outside of the RSAP program, um, there are engineers that end up going um, through their college to different countries. So that's not the only one available. Um, it is one of the more popular ones. So if you're interested in any of those uh, study abroads for engineering, you can talk to the Global Education Office um, and they have plenty of resources to figure out how you'll fit that into your schedule. Um, undergraduate research is another very popular thing that a lot of engineers get involved with. Undergraduate research is available for any major. Um, specifically in engineering, though, you'll see a lot of your, of your professors doing research in fields re related to it. And so it's very common for students to approach professors, say, hey, I'm interested in, in doing research with your uh, field of interest. Um, can I shadow you? Can I do some undergraduate research? Uh, and then you'll get hands-on experience within the lab or wherever they're working. It's a great way to see what your field involves itself with. And it's also a great way to have and make professional connections with professors that you would have inside the classroom, outside of it. Um, you can also do undergraduate research cross-disciplinary. So speaking from experience, I'm industrial and systems engineering, but last year I did research with mechanical engineering and vibrations. So it is very flexible. It's whatever you're really interested in, as long as you have a passion and a qualification for it. Uh, the professor usually don't have any problems taking you on. Um, and it, it's a great way to kind of get your hands dirty with what you are interested in in the engineering field. Um, finally, there are engineering professional societies and organizations and um, those basically include honors societies within each of the uh, majors of engineering, as well as fraternity and sororities that are specific to engineering students. So uh, speaking for, uh, as an example, AOE um, is an all-female uh, engineering sorority. Um, so obviously you have to be an engineering student to be able to join. Um, and if you're interested in any of these things, plus uh, any of the clubs or research that you can do, there is something called the OSHO that happens every year in the fall. Um, it is a place where engineering clubs and organizations, uh, professional and non, can come and show you what they're doing. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about, more about some of the projects that they do, but it's a great way to get involved right when you get to tech. So if you're interested in any of those things, they will be, uh, there'll be a, um, convention, or whatever you would call it, um, for those uh, organizations so you can get involved with them. All right, so <laughs> these, this is a map showing just a few of the companies that 
um, Virginia Tech engineering students have interned with over the summer or maybe co-opt. Um, obviously, not all the companies are on the screen because if we put all the companies on there, you would not be able to see the map. <laughs> um, but just to give a few, some of the bigger ones like NASA, um, 3M, uh, CAT, all those kinds of companies. But like I said, students go everywhere. <laughs> so um, just keep that in mind. Now that there's also support outside of class, uh, the College of Engineering understands that transitioning from high school to college with the amount of workload um, that engineers are put under can be difficult. So there are a lot of resources available to help you succeed academically. Um, so we'll start first with STEP going in chronological order. STEP is a student transition engineering program that's offered in the summer. It is a six week or five week program that allows you to take classes in the engineering courses that you would usually in the fall. So this includes calculus, chemistry, and the foundations of engineering course that I was talking about earlier. Now, this is really helpful because it'll help you bridge um, the transition between your high school AP classes and the college level classes and what they require. It also helps you manage your time better, so it can help you with that kind of stuff. It'll also help you gain professional uh, relationships with professors before classes even start. So I know a lot of students that I knew from the STEP program coming into their first semester were very confident to go up and talk to professors or very confident to go into office hours because they had already had that experience in the summer um, session. So it's definitely a really uh, amazing opportunity for engineering students coming in. And usually there are around 90 students or so, or 60 students or so, I believe, that are accepted every year. So uh, if, that's interesting, if that's interesting to you, definitely look into it. Um, there's also a seed peer mentoring. So seed peer mentoring is where an upperclassman will take you under their wing for around 10 to 12 weeks and show you around the College of Engineering, introduce you to different clubs and activities, as well as prepare you for um, interviews, give you resume help, help you sign up for classes. I personally uh, did this my freshman year and it was the most helpful thing that I did for myself. Uh, it helped me transition into the workload of engineering. Um, and it's not mandatory. So if you sign up and you decide you've kind of found your footing, you don't have to keep going to it. It's just there for engineering students to uh, help them. Now, career fairs, uh, this, these are really big for engineering students and they will usually be one huge one in the fall um, and one in the spring called Cameo. We're gonna focus more on the fall one though. The fall career fair for engineering students has over 300 companies and those 300 companies come specifically looking for Virginia Tech students. Um, as we'll talk about later, Virginia Tech is widely known for its engineering program. So a lot of companies, and as Shannon said, a lot of co-ops and internships are looking for tech students and tech engineers. If you look at the picture in the top left, the person wearing the maroon polo is a Virginia Tech alum. So that signifies, and you can see there are a lot of maroon polos there. It just shows how many Virginia Tech students graduate from their engineering degrees and then come back wanting to recruit more Virginia Tech students for their, in, for their internships. So uh, the amount of alumni support that engineers have right off the bat is incredible. And it has gotten me uh, foots in the door at amazing companies. So it's definitely a good networking opportunity just being a Virginia Tech Hokie and being an engineering student. And finally, we have Hypatia and Galileo. Hypatia and Galileo is a living learning community on Virginia Tech's campus within Lee Hall. And it is a uh, area specifically for engineering students to live in. So if you're an engineering student first admitted uh, and you wanna surround yourself with other engineering students, that's a great place to look. Um, it is a great way to have a support system as far as study groups go. If there's tests coming up, you, can, you know that every single person in your hall is definitely taking probably the same test. Um, so it's good to study with them. There's also a lab, um, a lab within Lee Hall that's designed specifically for engineering students. Um, within Hypatia and Galileo, and they're the only ones that have access to it. This includes 3D printers and stuff like that. So it's a very unique um, opportunity for engineering students living in that living learning community. Uh, but overall, um, I don't know if Shannon, you were involved with it, but 
Oh, I was. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I joined Hypatia, which is the female engineering living learning community. Um, Galileo is the male, but they're all housed in the same dorm building. I did that my freshman year. Um, and it was really great. Like Tyler said, I was able to just like, I, we, we keep our doors open so people can just pop in and out. But like, I would come back to my dorm and have um, calc homework and I'd be like, I don't know how to do this problem. And I'd just go out in the hall and be like, yo, has anyone done this calc homework yet? And someone would pop their head out and be able to help me. So it was really nice to have that peer mentorship. And then also um, the maker space that Tyler mentioned um, is very unique. Um, some of the projects that you'll get in that foundations of engineering course that we talked about earlier, you can do in there. So there's like, there's tons of equipment that you can't just get anywhere like 3D printers and, and, and laser cutters and all that kind of stuff. And like, how cool is it to be like, yeah, I can go down two floors and like go 3D print something like someone in the living learning community, like 3D printed a whole dinosaur suit. And like, while she was there, a company came in because they were getting a tour of the dorm. And then um, she ended up getting an internship and a full-time opportunity after that, because they were like, wow, you're spending your time in here 3D printing a costume. That's pretty cool. Um, so it's definitely a great, great opportunity. You also take a professional development class your fall semester, um, where you work on like resume building, your elevator pitch, um, things like that. So it definitely is a great opportunity. And then see peer mentoring if you don't want to live in that specific dorm. Um, see peer mentoring is what a lot of students go to as well um, to get, get that mentorship. And then later on after your freshman year to keep receiving that. Thank you, that was perfect. <laughs> yeah. All right, so um, Virginia Tech has these things called design teams, which are basically like how you can apply what you're learning in engineering to industry and like hands-on applications, right? So they have a motto called hands-on, minds-on. Um, and it's basically just a bunch of different engineer, well, you don't technically have to be engineering, but primarily engineering students who come together and focus on a common problem and solution. So um, like some of the pictures like that bottom left cor uh, corner picture is a concrete canoe, concrete canoe design team um, where they, uh, compete in a competition, I believe every two years. And it's a complete design made from scratch. There's things like um, Baja SAE, Formula SAE, where they like design a race car and they compete in a competition. Um, Bolt, which is an electric motorcycle. Um, there's uh, chemical boats and cars, things like that. Um, so there's a lot of different opportunities. I don't, I don't know if this is all of them, um, but there's tons of great ways to get involved. Um, it's a great way to get an understanding of what you could be doing in industry. And most of them have a competition either annually or every two years where they can show off their design on a national scale or maybe even global and, and get that recognition for the hard work that they, that they put in. So as I mentioned before, Virginia Tech Engineering Rankings so Virginia Tech is ranked number 13 for the best undergraduate program amongst accredited engineering schools and 31st for graduate programs. And this is um, according to US News and World Report. Um, however, there are also a ton of other rankings that are not through US News that kind of say all the same things. So Virginia Tech is um, definitely one of the best engineering programs on the East Coast and why so many engineering um, companies come um, every fall. So that's kind of what I was mentioning from before. Um, it's also ranked number seven for producers of engineers uh, for bachelor's degrees and number eight for producers of women engineers. So Virginia Tech engineering is very highly ranked and highly well regarded uh, within companies. All right, so these are some statistics on our um, engineering students. So uh, over the last five years, um, freshmen who continued into engineering who decided to pursue um, a specific discipline, um, that was around 90% of the general engineering students. Uh, for after graduation, this is for the class of 2019, 74% um, of them were employed or had a job offer by the end of graduation. 13% uh, went to grad school or have been accepted into a grad school. So they're pursuing post-secondary education. 
And the median starting salary for a Virginia Tech engineering grad is around $70,000. So scholarships. For freshmen, there are a lot of scholarship opportunities available, uh, including some listed below. So Davenport Leadership Scholarship, the Pratt Engineering Scholarship, um, the Leo A. Pattis Scholarship. Um, all of these can be found on Scholarship Central. So if you log in with your Hokey Pass, Hokey P um, ID and password, you can find all scholarships available for freshmen specifically. Uh, there's also financial aid available. So if you apply to the FAFSA, uh, you will most likely get notified by financial aid about if there's any award money or grants that you've been awarded. Um, for upperclassmen, it's a little, it's a little different. Um, once you've decl uh, declared an engineering major, you open yourself up to a different set of scholarships that are unique to that major itself. So for freshmen, you're applying to general engineering scholarships, but for upperclassmen, you can apply to general engineering scholarships, but also the departmental scholarships. So that opens up a lot more funding. Um, so the College of Engineering has a lot of funds, the departments have scholarships, and it's all one application. So usually it'll be a attach a resume, add a letter of recommendation, and answer a um, scholarship question, and you submit it, and then you are entered into all of the pools that you're qualified for. So it's a very easy process for upperclassmen um, to do if you're interested in applying for scholarship. All right, so um, all engineering students have to have a computer that follows specific guidelines. Um, they change slightly with each entering class. So um, if you have a computer or you're thinking about buying a new computer for college, please wait <laughs> until Virginia Tech releases those specifications. Um, typically, it'll have to be tablet enabled or have some sort of touch screen, um, a certain amount of storage, um, that kind of thing. Uh, Macs typically aren't used, so sorry if you're an Apple lover, um, but they will send out the specifications or be available on their website, um, typically towards the end of March, um, so keep an eye out for that, but you don't, don't worry about getting a computer before then. Also, um, you can get special pricing and a four-year warranty through the Virginia Tech Bookstore. So all those computers on sale there, there will automatically fulfill those engineering requirements. Um, and then it's nice because if you buy it through the bookstore and let's just say like your laptop breaks or you drop it off of your lofted bed in your dorm room freshman year, it's under warranty. You don't have to pay for it to be replaced and they'll give you a loaner until your old laptop is back and working good as new. Yep. All right, so why did I come to the College of Engineering at Virginia Tech? So um, this is a question that any engineering student could answer. Um, for me specifically, it started when I was four years old. Um, I went to my first Virginia Tech football game. My father is an alumni of the school. Um, so he took me to Virginia Tech. I got introduced to the Hokie Bird and to campus, and I knew that it was something somewhere that I wanted to be. I have very faint memories of it. Um, but my junior year, I was looking at engineering programs along the East Coast that uh, were applicable to what I was interested in. Um, I'm from Virginia, so Virginia Tech was an obvious choice for me. So I came here my junior year for the junior year open house, and I sat in person, what you guys are doing virtually, um, for an info session on the College of Engineering. Afterwards, I talked to some people within each respective major to ask them why they chose Virginia Tech. And I could see the passion and the enthusiasm that they had for the um, engineering degree that they were in and just for Virginia Tech's community in general. Um, I also, it was really big for me to have a minority presence, specifically like the LGBTQ community. And I saw a lot of clubs and organizations there that were very supportive um, of gay and lesbian uh, engineering students. So it definitely felt like a very welcoming environment. So I applied my senior year um, and that's how I ended up at Virginia Tech. I'm so glad that I decided to come and it has been such a life-changing experience from what I've been involved with to the research I've done to the people I've met. Uh, it has been something that will I will carry with me long after graduation. So that is why I chose the College of Engineering. 
Um, and then why I chose to come to Virginia Tech, I feel like if you talk to any Hokie, they're going to tell you like the environment is something like the, the, just like the climate and, and how everyone feels about the school is something you won't get anywhere else. And like, we can tell you that as many times as we want, but you're not really going to understand until you come to Virginia Tech and you really get a feel for it. But what really kind of locked that in place for me, um, I wasn't completely sure I wanted to go to Tech um, before I accepted. So I went to this event called Women's Preview Weekend. It's held by that living learning community, Hypatia, um, that we talked about earlier. And I was able to spend the night uh, in a dorm room with um, engineering students in Hypatia. And we went to different events, um, club events, things like that. And I really just felt like the school cared. Um, and that's something that I could say, like going on different college tours, I didn't really feel like, like, of course, colleges want to recruit students, but I didn't feel that connection with any school until I came to tech where I was like, wow, I'm not even a student yet. And they really care. They're taking care of us. And like, I had, I went to like um, different booths at this fair and like clubs were trying to recruit me and I wasn't even a student. And I was like, why are you so, why are you so adamant about giving me resources that I have, that I will lead me to success if I'm not even a student here? Like, this doesn't make any sense. So I feel like just, you know, being there, even if for other students, even if you don't know them is, is something that not a lot of colleges can say that they do for students who are not even accepted at the school or not even like for sure on going. So I really feel like Virginia Tech cares about their students and that's why I decided to come here. So All that right. is it for, oh, sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. I was just gonna say, we do have a lot of questions in the chat. Um, so I'll read out the first one, I guess, Tyler, if you wanna answer that. Yeah, sure. Um, so the first question, is there any cap on the number of students admitted into any of the majors at the end of freshman year, or is it always guaranteed with the 3.0 GPA criteria met? Right, and that's a great question. So it's guaranteed that if you have a 3.0 going into your sophomore year, you're guaranteed. So they're going to make space for you. Now, that being said, um, there are some majors that they do cap at a 3.0. So that would include majors like mechanical engineering, aerospace engineering is usually pretty popular. Um, industrial engineering is becoming more popular. So it really depends on the popularity for each class. So when you're applying to Virginia Tech your senior year, um, you'll see that you can declare, uh, you can say which major you're interested in. And that's how they kind of gauge how, how, how much interest they have going in, how many seats they need to kind of reserve per class. Now, um, there's no cap if you have above a 3.0, but if it's really popular and they've hit their maximum um, and you have under a 3.0, it's most likely not, um, you'll most likely get your second or third option for engineering degree. So you kind of touch on this. There's a next question. Um, oh, yeah. Well, it says, um, what happens if a student has lower than a 3.0 GPA after the first year? And like you said, uh, like Tyler said, um, if you have below a 3.0, you have to have above a 2.0 to apply into a specific engineering discipline. Um, if you don't have above that 3.0 or that 3.0 minimum GPA, then you're not guaranteed a spot in the major that you want. So you'll end up picking your top three disciplines. And then um, if, they, if that discipline, like Tyler said, has not reached maximum capacity and you're within the 2.0 to three point or 2.9999 whatever range um then if they have space they you can get in that way mm -hmm. um but there is no cap so like if you have a 3.0 and their maximum number of students they're prepared to take is 300 and you are the 301st person but you have a, a 3.0 or above they're gonna make space for you like you're not gonna be left behind yeah, another important thing to note um, and something that I learned actually last year um, was that um, last year's freshman class, the average um, GPA for that class going from freshman to sophomore year was a 3.08. So on average, engineering freshmen will get the major that they're looking at. 
Um, that being said, however, um, we know that a lot of people coming into Virginia Tech Engineering are very high achieving um, students. So it's important to note that um, coming from a school, a high school where you might be getting all A's, um, the average GPA is a 3.08. So it's definitely still challenging, but it's doable. And the average student does get their um, declared major. Okay, so next question, what is the acceptance percentage into the College of Engineering? I don't know the specific statistics on that. Um, we don't work directly with admissions, so we wouldn't be able to give you that. If you wanted to know, maybe um, reach out to the College of Admissions. Even if you're not a student, they are happy to answer any questions that you have, any concerns. Um, I think we only know like the average GPA coming yeah. in. Yeah, I, I, I want to say that there's, there's not a defined like public number um, that Virginia Tech has published specifically for the College of Engineering, but I do know um, looking at the average uh, GPA and SAT score, um, it is more competitive as far as like statistics go for like the, ACT, the SAT, the GPA um, than other colleges within Virginia Tech. Um, so the competition is greater, but I'm not sure the acceptance rate per se. All right, next question. Um, which coursework is used to calculate the weighted GPA, 9th through 11th or just 10th through 11th grades? All academic coursework is considered. Yes. So um, your weighted G, well, in terms of um, your high school GPA, your weighted GPA is 9th through 12th grade. Um, and then all academic coursework is considered. Whether, whether that will be transferable is a different story. You would have to look on the um, transfer like guidelines for that. Um, but yeah, your GPA considered is from ninth to 12th grade. Unless you took like a class before, before ninth grade and you're on a like, yeah. accelerated program, then maybe it might be different, but like typically the classes that you would take specifically ninth through 12th grade is what's considered. Yeah. All right, the next question is, is there a separate application and a requirement to the College of Engineering or specific engineering majors? Um, so correct me if I'm wrong, Shannon, but I do not believe uh, when you apply to the College of Engineering, there's anything different that you have to do. However, if there is, um, if once you're in the College of Engineering and you're applying specifically to an engineering major, um, there is a, um, a specific application if you, if you don't have your first choice. I'm, I'm, I'm actually, so, I don't think so there There's no separate application when you're applying to Virginia Tech. Like you, you specify on your application that you're interested in the College of Engineering and then you'll automatically apply into that um, specific college at Virginia Tech. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of when you're declaring, we call it declaring your major. So when you're deciding which discipline to go into, um, it is just a, like a, you select your top three choices. Like you don't have to write an essay or anything like that. Um, if you're in general engineering and you're going, you're trying to get into your discipline. Um, it, it might be a little different, I want to say, if you have below that 3.0, but it's still the same application process that everyone takes. Um, you list your first three choices, and then if yep. you aren't guaranteed your spot, so if you have below that 3.0, then they might follow up with something. Yeah, yeah, that's that sounds, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the next question, is there a green engineer, there is a green engineering minor, correct? Is that also open to non-engineering students? Um, so I think all or most minors are open to like non-engineering students. It's just more favorable for engineering yeah. students to go. For, for green engineering specifically, I can speak to it a little bit. Um, one of my friends is doing it. Um, it is um, not open to non-engineering students because of the uh, curriculum that you're supposed to take. So a lot of classes that you're required to take for your green engineering degree um, have prerequisites that you will take as um, engineering specific classes. So for green engineering, there are a few classes that you can only access as a college engineering student. Um, so in that case, green engineering is not available for students outside of the engineering field, just because the classes that you would need to take to take uh, to get that minor aren't available to you. 
that's a good point. So it's not necessarily like you have to have that major that you're studying um, right. to receive that minor. It's just that some of the classes that are required for that might be restricted to engineering only. But that would be something that you would work out with your academic advisor if you decided to pursue um, a minor, the general engineering academic advisors, advisors within each department and then outside Virginia Tech are really great in answering those questions and they'll be able to walk you through that whenever you decide. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the next question, uh, we kind of talked about the 3.0 GPA requirement already. Um, who are your top employers? Oh, who are your? Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. Who are your top employers hiring for interns or jobs, internships or jobs from College of Engineering and maybe specifically for a CS major? So, um, Tyler, I don't know if you want to touch on this. I am not sure what our top employers are. I know that there are common ones, but I wouldn't be able to give you a mm -hmm. list. Yeah, I, I also, there, it depends on what major you're interested in. I can speak specifically to like industrial and systems engineering. A really big employer for us is um, Deloitte and Disney. Like those are two huge employers that hire a lot of uh, industrial and systems engineers. Um, as far as for top employers from the College of Engineering, I would say you should look more towards the uh, career fair in the fall. So um, General Electric's um, GE has a lot. Um, NASA usually has a lot of applicants um, and usually hires a good amount of Virginia Tech students. Um, Boeing, like very big companies that can hire a good amount of students are usually looking for Virginia Tech students. I don't know specifically about the CS majors, uh, but I can only speak to my major specifically. I think it's also, um, you're going to find that it's different among different departments as well. Yeah. Like for electrical engineering, it's, it's, like my class is 60, well, as of last year with 60 students, whereas mechanical is like 500. No. So, you know, someone who's thinking about electrical, our top employers don't compare to someone who's in mechanical, who's, who may be a top employer. So I definitely think it's going to vary a lot between different departments. Um, and even if like, even if you're not specifically studying that, like, for me personally, I um, was, I guess, approached is not the right word, but I was found online um, by someone at Google for a, a software internship. And like, I don't, I'm not in CS and don't deal a ton with um, programming. So I definitely think like, you're gonna have all the options available to you. And if you have a specific company that you wanna go for, you wanna work for before you graduate, just, just make it that, make that your goal and, and you'll get there. Like it doesn't have, you'll, you'll get there. Yeah. And chances are a Virginia Tech student has already worked there or is currently working there, which is what some of the best parts about the alumni network. So, yeah. Okay. Next question is how difficult is it to transfer into engineering after your first year? And if you are able to transfer, do your AP credits still count when you start your second year? Um, so the difficulty in transferring into the engineering department um, it is fairly difficult just because they do reserve um, class selection. It, it really comes down to if you can select your classes on time and if you can get all the, all the prereqs in, prerequisite classes in before you start your second year. Um, so the hardest part about coming in as, let's say, university studies and coming into engineering is that they're not guaranteeing you a spot in any of the classes. So if there's a class overflow in, let's say, chemistry or foundations of engineering, and they don't have space, um, the first students that they start to um, drop from the course are university study students that are not general engineering. Um, so that would be probably the most difficult part, difficult part about um, transferring. Did you want to say something, Shannon? Yeah, so um, I want to speak on that a little bit because my uh, one of my roommates actually uh, transferred into engineering mm -hmm. um, after her freshman year. So she did not come in as a general engineering student. And she was, to, in my opinion, like way beyond, um, way ahead of, other students like she was taking calc three her freshman year and i was like wow that's crazy there's no way you're not going to get in and like she had to write an essay to get into the college of engineering it was super strict she still didn't know she was going to get in um so it is 
definitely much, much harder. And I, this, I don't know if everyone will have the same opinion, but I know like one of my friends, she was not sure she was going to do engineering, but she definitely was like, that was something she was weighing. And so she went into engineering at Virginia Tech first because the chances of her deciding, well, maybe she wanted to do engineering and she didn't apply to the program first, she had much slimmer chances of, pers of pursuing that in her college education and then later on, as opposed to starting with the program and seeing how it pans out. Um, so definitely be considerate of that if you're not sure of engineering and maybe you're considering something else. Um, it is much, much, much harder to get in once you you've applied to the school and gotten in in a different college of in Virginia Tech. Yeah. Um, and then the second part of that question, I think, was, uh, and if you're able to transfer, do AP credits still count? Yes. So AP credits will count. Um, usually they'll count for pathways. So um, a lot of a lot of students will come in with um, credit for like maybe calculus or like psychology or US history. And those credits will carry out um, regardless of what major you're in. Um, I can say, however, that if you're in STEM related AP or IB classes and you get that credit, it'll definitely help you a lot more um, when you're going into like, if you're trying to transfer in because you have a lot of those classes knocked out of the way. Um, but any AP credit that you get will transfer over regardless of major. Okay, uh, the next question, how safe is the campus now given that there was a shooting incident in the past? So um, it was, <laughs> that was a pretty tragic event for Virginia Tech, um, but we, it's, Virginia Tech has definitely bounced back from it. I'm, I can't give you like on a scale, but I know um, from news sources that Virginia Tech and Blacksburg specifically are one of the safest places to be. Um, to kind of touch on that, um, if you go to the campus, there are these, I call them blue lights. I don't know what the official yeah. name is, um, but they're basically like emergency stations and they're a blue light on top. So mm -hmm. the idea is that if you're standing at a blue light, you will be able to see another blue light so that you always know like um, a safe route home uh, and then uh, there's like a, a way to contact the police through those blue lights so that if you're if there is an emergency then you, you don't have to worry about like oh my god my phone is broken or something yeah. also they have this um, program I don't know what the correct word for it is but um, basically where if it's after dusk or d dusk um, they will pick you up and drive you anywhere on campus for free. It's a university sponsored organization. So it's not some sketchy, like I'm getting picked up in a van. Um, no, like if you have a class or a test and it's eight o'clock and it's dark out and you don't want to walk all the way back to your dorm, they will come pick you up for free and drop you off for free outside of your dorm. Yeah. Um, I also, just to speak on it um, and mentioning everything, already said is all things that Virginia Tech has implemented. They've also implemented VT alerts that sync up with not just your phone, but the clocks around campus. So there's a clock in every um, classroom on campus um, that's hooked up to VT alerts. So if there is um, an emergency, either make that be um, a personal emergency or a, like a weather emergency. Um, Virginia Tech uh, Police Department notifies everyone who has signed up for VT alerts on their phone and on the clock. So if you're in class, the clock will um, show the announcement. And um, it's something that all Virginia Tech uh, students are required to sign up for. So um, that just adds a layer of safety amongst all the other things that Shannon already mentioned. So yeah. And it is in a good area, like it's not in a sketchy part of the country or anything like that. Um, and people like in Blacksburg are also um, like very aware of the college campus and willing to help students out as well. Like it's definitely, I have never felt as a female um, and of color, I have never felt unsafe um, walking back. And there are always, even if you do, um, there are always either other Hokies who will walk back with you. Like I've had a couple friends who are like, hey, I know you don't care, but I'm gonna walk back. I'm gonna walk you back from your club meeting. And so it's definitely a community. Everyone looks out for each other. 
Um, next question, Tyler, you can answer this if you want. Are there, are there separate applications for the College of Engineering and University Studies? We kind of touched on this. It isn't a case of a first choice, second choice, or one yeah. single application. Yes. Um, so um, one application, but if you don't get into the College of Engineering, if that's your first choice, then you're, uh, are you then out or are you then possibly offered university studies instead? Um, so yeah, so I believe Virginia Tech Admissions has been changing um, some of their processes because they've noticed that a lot of people will apply um, universities, like they'll apply to their first choice. Um, and so I believe if you, if you declare your college of engineering um, as your first choice, I'm not too familiar with the new updates that they've made to the admissions page, but I believe if you're not accepted to your first choice, you're just not accepted in general. Um, specifically with the college of engineering, that could be um, an, a misinterpretation, but that's what I've, I've, I've heard from the admissions. Um, I would definitely, um, I'm also not too sure about that. Uh, like I said, like we said earlier, we don't directly work with admissions. So um, definitely if you're, if you're stuck between maybe two different colleges at the university or um, concerned about like the acceptance rate or anything like that, please reach out to undergraduate admissions at Virginia Tech specifically for engineering as well. They'll be able to offer you a lot more guidance and information than we would. Yeah. Um, also, Tyler, uh, I'm not familiar with this, but do you use the SRAR for grade reporting? Yeah, so I was actually doing a little bit of research because I wasn't familiar with it either, but it's the self-reporting academic uh, record, um, and Virginia Tech does offer that as part of their admission. It's something that they've changed for the 2019-2020 um, cycle. Um, so uh, for those who aren't familiar, it's a portal that you can go and basically report scores and grades um, that will be verified by documents later. Um, so you don't have to send your transcript. You can you can just put in your grades and then the transcript will just verify. Um, so yes, Virginia Tech does do that. Um, and that is something new that they didn't do when we were applying, so um, great question. <laughs> yeah. um, do SAT subject tests in math and, or science help serve as a differentiator in the admission? So I cannot speak to this year as much. I know um, when I was, a sophomore it was kind of being discussed about it's not the top priority in any way shape or form and in most cases they're not going to look at one thing and be like oh no she doesn't fit our base requirement or he doesn't fit our base requirement so they're out they're not accepted it's a very um, all-encompassing application they're gonna look at everything um, so maybe if your SAT or ACT score is lower um, don't think that it's you're automatically not gonna get in because ultimately you're, we're not gonna know why you, and you're not gonna know why you didn't get accepted. So just do the best you can um, and everything will work out. Also, I do wanna say that um, I believe Virginia Tech does super score. Um, so if you do have a lower score and you have the opportunity to retake it and that's something that you want to do, um, Virginia Tech will look at your highest score. Awesome. And then the last question is, is it true that when you apply to the College of Engineering, they only look at your math and English ACT subscores? Um, so while I cannot specifically um, speak to if they only look at math and English, I know that when you're looking at your general um, information as a student, so when I was looking at my general information, um, it showed me my AC, because I never took the AC, SAT, um, it showed me my ACT composite score, my math score specifically, and my writing score specifically, um, as, as it was reported. Now, that was what was reported on my general information. That's not to say that they don't look at the other scores. Um, I believe they look at the whole ACT um, composite, but um, they do report math and English on your general information student page. I don't know if that's part of, um, if they only look at that. I would just aim for a good overall score in all subjects that um, align with the SAT conversion to the ACT um, that also match with what we were talking about, about having a heavy interest in math and science and proving that through your um, standardized testing. 
All right. Um, yeah, do you want to go? <laughs> uh, I don't see any more questions. Um, but like we said earlier, if you do have more questions later on, um, definitely reach out to admissions or um, anyone in Virginia Tech Engineering. And I'm sure that if you wanna get in contact with a student, there are tons of ways to do that. Um, and if you express that, um, I think any Hokie will be willing to. Um, I think Tyler, you just put your email in the chat. So let me see, I can put my email there too. Um, and you can reach out to us if you have any questions, maybe you are interested in a specific discipline, um, then feel free to reach out um, or you can always uh, get okay. that um, get that information and we can maybe set you up with someone else in that department. Awesome, but other than that, thank you so much for attending. Have a great, safe rest of your day. Um, and thank you for coming to the College of Engineering Info Session.